Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Even when the weather is calm on shore, the ocean can produce huge, destructive waves. The term breakwater refers to permanent structures placed around coastal areas designed to protect natural and man-made areas from the effects of tides, currents, and storm surges, as well as rogue waves. Breakwaters are integral to the design of ports as moored and anchored ships require a barrier between themselves and the ocean. In the past, they have been made of sand, cement, and metal, depending on the available materials. By absorbing the energy of incoming waves, these structures can significantly reduce the chances that ports, ships, and other structures will be negatively impacted. One of the newest approaches to coastal protection is the tetrapod. These are unique, wave-dissipating concrete blocks. They were first developed in the 1950s, but have only recently been utilized by coastal organizations worldwide. The shape of the tetrapod is extremely effective at dissipating the energy carried by ocean waves. Allowing water to flow around them rather than against them prevents much of the wear and tear that other breakwater designs often suffer from. And since the shapes interlock with one another, they also reduce displacement, allowing them to stay in service much longer. Tetrapods come in a variety of different sizes, depending on the type of environment they are placed in. They may need to weigh as much as 25 tons each. Plants that manufacture tetrapods are often placed close to shorelines in order to keep costs down. As it can take hundreds or even thousands of pods to protect a shoreline effectively, the cost of a breakwater project can quickly grow beyond initial projections. As the effectiveness of tetrapods continues to spread around the world, more and more companies have begun manufacturing them. The process starts with steel molds. These make up the shape of the final tetrapod and can be reused many times over as long as they are properly greased to prevent adhesion. A concrete slurry is then deposited inside the mold. This is then mixed in order to ensure there are no gaps between the mold's walls and the concrete itself. Once the cement has had enough time to dry, the three-part mold can be pried apart 
revealing the final tetrapod. In order to properly install a tetrapod breakwater, heavy lifting machinery of all different sizes and shapes is often used. Some organizations utilize special barges to construct break walls further from the land. The goal is to place the tetrapods in an interlocking manner, not unlike a large puzzle. This ensures that fewer pods will be displaced over the years of being hit by repeated waves, day in and day out. Once one pod is lost, it begins to erode the strength of the entire wall. Though tetrapods remain extremely successful and widely used, this hasn't kept researchers from attempting to design newer, better wave dissipating structures. One example is the X-Block. Designed by a Dutch firm called BAM InfraConsult, these concrete armor units, as they're known, can be placed in a single layer around coastal structures and protected lands. Like tetrapods, they dissipate the wave energy to reduce flooding and impact damage. And because it only takes a single layer to accomplish this goal, X-blocks use far less concrete, take up less space, and are much less costly than their older counterparts. Similar to tetrapods, X-blocks are formed in molds. In this case, the process is much faster and far more automated, but requires very specific equipment and factory infrastructure. The X-Blocks enjoy superior hydraulic stability thanks to their unique interlocking system and highly porous armor layer. Thanks to the genius of the design, the placement of the X-Blocks does not matter as much as with other breakwater structures. Though the X-Block design only reached the market in 2018, it is quickly becoming one of the most popular coastal solutions. Island nations like Japan have nearly endless miles of coastline that they are vested in to protect from waves and storm surges. For hundreds of years, Japan has utilized various systems to keep the sea at bay. Examples include seawalls, return wave blocks, and various underwater structures. Be they new or old, each of these systems has its own unique capabilities and benefits. The port of Tokyo, for example, 
utilizes an extensive system of seawalls that create 20-foot high gates, which most high waves cannot penetrate. These are supported by floodgates and inland locks, which close in the event of a tsunami or typhoon, protecting low-lying areas. In coastal areas of Korea, municipalities are also known for utilizing tetrapods alongside special return wave blocks, which feature hollow sections underneath concrete walkways. They are essentially vertical retaining wall structures with rounded, hollow sections. Where a standard wall will eventually see erosion at the base due to the force of the waves, these new walls allow the water and sand to enter the hollow shapes at the base of the structure and are forced upward. Another important anti-erosion technology can be found in these underwater tie cells. These are essentially flat, concrete structures with wide, cross-sectional areas designed to prevent subsidence, which is the slow caving or sinking of land. At the same time, these hollow, geometrical tie cells allow seawater movement and contribute to the health of sea life. Perhaps no city is more susceptible to flooding and other water-related problems than Venice. Built upon a group of around 118 small islands, the city is connected by hundreds of canals and bridges stretching over a lagoon, which is, in turn, attached to the Adriatic Sea. To help protect the city from flooding, the Venetian government installed the Mose system, which translates into experimental electromechanical module. It is essentially an integrated system of mobile gates that can be lifted in an emergency to isolate the lagoon from the sea temporarily. In fact, experts claim it can protect against waves and storm surges as high as 10 feet. The Mose is actually a little more than a series of underwater platforms. When triggered, they will raise and create a barrier between the calm Venice Lagoon and the Adriatic. Though it is comparatively low-tech, the size and scale of the Mose system is still quite impressive. In the end, the Venetian government hopes to have 78 gates in total, divided up into four barriers. With any luck, this will prevent the ancient city from further floods and erosion for the rest of the century. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.